Hello. Hello. Nope, stop. Not happening. We just did that joke. This guy does not rehash jokes. Hello. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the Figma EX042 Deluxe version of Deadpool. Now, I don't usually go for Figma, only because I guess there's not a lot of properties they make that I'm interested in. I did pick up the Captain America Thor and Iron Man a long time ago and never opened them. I mean, looking at them in the package, I knew they were cartoony. I knew they wouldn't fit in with my Legends and other 6-inch figures, so... I don't know why I never opened them. And then I got the Figma Elsa from Frozen. It's cool for what it is. It's a little bit of a traffic cone, but that's just the design from the movie. But this is Deadpool. I had to get Deadpool. And then it comes with some extras that I haven't seen on any other Deadpool figure before. So it was just bait. They threw the worm out there and I bit as soon as it went up for pre-order. Now looking at the package, you could see the window doesn't really show everything that's in there. There's stuff hidden back down here, but there's a lot of empty space. This is the same problem I had with the Elsa. I mean, you, there's stuff in the window, but if you look back in there, it's just nothing. On the side, you get a promotional shot of Deadpool with a half mask burrito. On the back, a bunch of pretty promotional pictures. Alliteration is your friend. Showing all the extras that come with the deluxe version. I don't remember exactly what the difference is between the standard and the deluxe version, but I had to go for the deluxe version just based on the amount of stuff you get. Down here, you have the warnings. The unreadables probably says something like... Uh, you have an action figure that comes with boxer shorts. Please do not play with or review this figure while doing the same. I've never been one to listen to warnings. On the other side, more promotional shot. Top, same thing. On the bottom, well, same thing. So, I'm going to get this open and see what's going on here. Okay, interesting. The dead space behind it was for this box that holds all the deluxe stuff. And I was about to stupidly spout out... I wonder if it's the same box for the standard and the deluxe. No, because the box has deluxe branded all over it. Looking inside the box, yep, there's the uh, rifle. There is the boxer shorts and legs. The sai, the extra head with the chimichanga or burrito or whatever. And then the hand to hold that. So me saying I don't know what is extra in the deluxe. There you go. And there we go, all out of the package, and uh, whew, there's some interesting stuff going on here, but also some um, disappointing stuff. How about that? Now looking at the sculpt, it's nice and detailed, but you will definitely see a cartoonish vibe to it. Can you see a vibe? I don't know. That just poured right out of my mouth. But you can see that it's very animated inspired. And I think that's just the way Figma goes when it comes to this kind of stuff. I look at the Captain America, it's about the same type of aesthetic there. The proportions are stretched out a bit, but all the sculpting is nice. There's wrinkles to the costume, there's the seam lines and the metal bits. I dig the bracers and then the shin guards on it. And they do a good job of hiding which parts are plastic and which parts are rubbery. And there's actually a lot of rubbery parts to it but the paint on top of that the red has a little bit of shading to it the black kind of a grayish tone to it it's not just straight up black so it's nice to look at overall get up to the head pretty much the same details here you see the seam lines running up you have the little extra mask up on the back of the head and then of course the black around the eyes that's signature Deadpool now like I said there are some rubbery parts to kind of help out with articulation the back of the gauntlet you pull the hand off you can see that the band right there is a rubbery part. It hides the articulation nicely, but it also moves out of the way when you're wanting to use it. And that's the same for the top of the boot. This piece right here, you can bring it up and it gets up out of the way. Also the web gear or the strap coming up and around, it's rubbery, it gets out of the way of the shoulder. And then of course the crotch piece to get out of the way of the legs, but it doesn't help a lot because of these pouches hanging down as far as the shorts do. Well, I call them shorts, but the crotch piece itself. A couple of funky things with the articulation. If you look up, it pretty much opens up the neck right there to expose the joint, which they, they, there's no other way of really doing it unless they made the neck a rubber piece too. But they did that because the neck itself at the top doesn't really look up. That's where you get the down, but the head runs into the back of the neck to try to look up. So they had to compensate a little bit 
by putting it there. And then the thigh holster with the pouches coming around the leg, it just kind of stops. It looks okay because the band is sculpted to the leg, but the whole assembly is actually on a ball joint going out to the holster. This strap is not attached to anything. So you can bring it down, around. You can't really pull it off. I don't want to pull too hard, but the peg is coming off the leg anyway, so it would look odd without the holster. Now at first when I got it out of the package, I pretty much hated that thing. But as I've messed with it more and more, I've noticed it less and less. So it doesn't really bother me now. The shoulders, in order to hide the articulation point whenever you're moving it around, they have this jut out in the back right there. And with the shoulders all the way up, it's not really noticeable. You can't really see it in the silhouette. But if you bring the shoulders down to uh, articulate them or bring them forward or something, they stick out like wings. That's another thing that has bothered me less and less as I've messed with the figure, but I had to point it out. And then finally, the face. There's several different face plates. At first, I thought it was the whole head, but on the standard version, it's all face plates. Now, when I got it out of the box, there was no seam line. Well, there was a seam line, but it wasn't this noticeable. But as you can see, there's a gap right there, and that's from pulling it off and putting it back on. I don't think I moved anything because, as you can see, there's a big peg in there. Maybe it's off center now, but I think. I had the same problem with either Elsa or Olaf from that set. Once I pulled the face off and put another one on, it's gapped like that. And the other faces do the same thing, exactly the same way. It touches down here, but not up here. Going over articulation, there's a ball joint, and I call it a ball joint. It's a swivel, swivel hinge in the middle. But since there's so many of them, I'm going to call it that through the articulation process. But there's one of those at the top of the neck and then at the bottom of the neck, so you can get up. You can look down, get nice side, nice side, not great, but it's there. If you do get it cocked the right way, you can turn it and get it more, but you're manipulating that ball joint into different positions up under there. The shoulder going into the body is a true ball. It's just a ball in the socket, so you can get up, you can get down, you can get some forward, you can get some back, and that comes out to a ball joint in the actual shoulder that has swivel on that, and then you can go up, down, all the way around. Figma ball joint in the elbow, it comes up to about right there. You get swivel at that same point. Wrists are the same kind of ball joint. You can get it go up and down, or if you get it there and turn, you can get it side to side. I have a feeling it's the same joint in the mid torso because you can get crunched and you can arc back, but you've got to kind of, well, never mind. A minute ago it was doing that, but you get nice range of movement, really. And then it's a ball joint going down to a Y in the legs right there. So you get some forward and back there too if you manipulate it with the legs. This side, the pouches get in the way, but you can come forward, you can go back, go out. Same type of ball joint in the knee comes up nearly all the way. Again, same joint in the ankle. You can go back, you can go forward, and then that I think is a forward facing pin for some rocker. Going over accessories, and this is gonna take a while. <laughs> I feel like I've been taking pictures of accessories for a good two hours now. But he has several sets of hands. He comes with two fists. He comes with two splayed out hands. He comes with two grip hands for bladed weapons. He comes with two trigger finger hands. And then he has hands to make the heart symbol or you can use this to hold the weight of the weapons up. Then he also comes with a pointing finger. He comes with the thumbs up. And he comes with, uh, I, there, this is called several things, you know what it is. And it's very easy to switch those out, you just pull off, well, I say that. The fists are the only hands in the set, and I guess because they came on the figure that you push it on, and you can hear an audible pop for that to go on, and it actually locks on. All the other hands, I don't know if it's because they're on these sprues, I dig these by the way, but I don't know if it's held those hands the, the hole open more or something, but they go on, they slide on, they stay on, but they don't lock on. He comes with two pistols, fake pistols, kinda, that go in the holsters to simulate the guns going in there. Now I can see why they did this. Uh, they didn't want to make him wide for the whole gun to fit in there. It just kind of plugs in there. They look good in there, and then when he's holding the gun, you can have that out. It looks like an empty holster. So it does work. Now the one on the hip, it goes in there, but it doesn't go as tight as the hip holster over here does. In fact, this was falling out in the package, so I'm good either way, really. Now, separately, he comes with one of those guns that look like it goes in the holster, but he only comes with one. What's the deal with that? Because for his other pistol, he comes with this 357 Dirty Harry looking thing that doesn't match the first one at all. Now, both of these are pretty much cast in the color they are. The uh, Dirty Harry gun is a little bit darker than the silver uh, automatic 
whatever that is. Again, I'm showing my ignorance of firearms. Now I figured out the best way to put these in because the hands aren't as flexible as you would like them. So you gotta kinda turn it and put it in sideways, bring it down and then twist onto the trigger finger. And that's easier to do off the arm. Just plug the hand in after you put the gun in. He also comes with a knife, red and black, silver blade. I like the sculpt of this. Now this goes in the smaller grip hand and it's a very tight fit. Again, the hands aren't that flexible. So you gotta kinda force it in there and it feels like it's almost too tight, but it goes in there. And then it also has a scabbard or sheath down on the leg. It goes in there and it has a kind of a snap to lock in there. So it's not falling out. Now he comes with a set of sword sheaths that go on his back. I like the smoothness of these. There's a simplicity to it that I like. In fact, I could probably describe the whole figure that way. It's simple, but like the, was it the Revel Tech, the Amazing Yamaguchi? These aren't real swords in the scabbards. But there is a pin that goes through and you can adjust how you want the swords on his back if you want them. Oh, nope, nope. But you have to watch it because it works its way off that peg. You gotta push it back on there. But you put it on his back, you can either have him straight up like that or more spread out, however you want it. Options are good. He also comes with a set of katanas that are just, you know, solid pieces, blade, handle, guard. I like that it has a little bit of a detail. I don't know if it's paint or in the plastic, but if you look down the blade, you can see kind of shiny triangles. And then he comes with an extra pair of faces. In the package, it's just that neutral Deadpool look, both eyes looking kind of mean, but you know, neutral. He comes with a face that looks like he's smiling underneath the masks. The, the eyes are kind of half moon. It, it's a happy looking face. And then he comes with another face where one eye is wider than the other. Puzzled, uh, really angry, uh, whatever you want to use it for. Like I showed earlier to switch those out, if you pull from the chin, it kind of works its way off because you get to the other two heads and they are tight as hell. I don't know if it's because the other one was on it in the package and it's, and it's worn in for lack of a better term, but you put this one on, it looks great. You can still see the gap though. Now I think that's all the standard accessories, but we get to the deluxe accessories and that includes a pair of psi. These work just like the knife. They go into the tight grip hand. They look great. I like the silver to them. He comes with a pair of rifles. Again, cast in the base color. There's nothing special to them. The sculpt is nice, but there's no paint to it. He comes with an extra head and this one isn't just a faceplate. It's a whole extra head. And this is the uh, mask up looks like he's eating a burrito type thing. And then there's a little damage to the skin. You know, Wade has the skin condition. So it, it it's, comes across really nice on the exposed part here. And to switch that out, you actually have to pull the whole head off and the ball joint comes off with the head. The extra head has an extra ball joint in it that plugs into there. And it seems a little bit small, but so does the other one. And then the deluxe parts comes with an extra left hand grip and that's to hold the chimichanga, burrito, whatever. Not a lot of detail to the burrito. There's no ends to it. It's completely wrapped up. There is a bite out on one end, but no color, no filling, no nothing over there. And then finally, there's the determining factor that made me order this damn thing. And that would be the pantsless wearing boxer legs. You can see that same skin condition type thing running along the legs. It's great little detail. It's not bloody, it's not really gory, but you can see that there's something wrong with his epidermis. And then the shorts themselves, the nice wrinkles, the rubber piece for the crotch region, and then the hearts are tampoed on really nicely. But then we get to actually putting them on. It's taken a few times for me to figure out exactly how to do it without feeling like I'm ripping the thing apart, but it's still a little bit, you wanna take the leg and pull straight out. You don't wanna pull down. You don't wanna try to pry. You wanna just pop straight to the side because that's the most open part of the socket. Now this leg, because of this damn holster, because of this strap, because of these pouches, because of this, I actually knocked this off earlier. I had to glue it back on. You got this holster. So there's a lot of stuff going on that you wanna try to avoid pushing or pulling on too much to get this other leg off. And then that snap, it's a little bit disconcerting. You hear that pop and that usually means plastics breaking. Pull off the rubber crotch piece that leaves the belt, the holster, and you can see this Y piece with the ball joints on each side. And here you take this and put it on here. And here comes the tricky part because it's hard to push this on here when this is just flying free. So you got to try to hold this with your thumb and pull with this trying to put that ball joint on there. At first my genius plan was to leave one leg on because it kind of holds it in place while you're trying to shove the other leg on. 
but you can't switch out the crotch piece without pulling both of them off. Get one on as best you can, and then the other one, like I said, this leg holds it in place, so you can snap that one on. That's the boxers, that's the legs. All that's left is you pull the boots off the costumed legs and put those on these legs. There's no putting it the wrong way because you can see the peg is an L-type shape and it only goes on this side. I have a feeling Deadpool's gonna stay like this. It's not super difficult, but I don't know. Plus, this is why I bought it for this look, so this is how I'm gonna leave it. First up, here he is with the Marvel Legends Deadpool. Uh, as you can see, this is, a, this is a small figure. It's not gonna work in your 112 scale display, even though he looks a little bit small for figure art scale too, and figure arts definitely run to the low side of six inch. For giggles, here he is with the amazing Yamaguchi Deadpool and the Mezco 112th Collective Deadpool. But this is where it's at. If you collect Figma figures or any of the Avengers or any other, I don't know what Figma really makes, but with this Captain America and even this Thor, this works. I'm okay with Deadpool being just a bit shorter than Captain America because it shares the same aesthetic through all three figures. So at the end of the day, I do like the figure. It's grown on me. When I first got it out of the package, I thought, this is tiny. This is hard to manipulate. It's really hard to switch the legs out. What's that doing? Why is that so weird? Wow, that looks funky. Okay, I guess this is okay. But as time went on, I took more and more pictures. Like I said, it's been several hours since I've opened it. I, I grew to like it more and more. Especially because it looks so different from my other Deadpool figures. The boxer shorts really does it for me. But if you're looking to replace your Marvel Legends Deadpool or any other Deadpool that you have in your 112th display, this is not it. This is Figma scale. It's definitely a smaller scale it's not gonna go with any of your other figures unless your other figures are Figma. But I look at this like I look at my Revel Tech figures or my Amazing Yamaguchi figures. This is off on its own. But yeah, if you're used to dark and gritty or you're used to the comic look, unless your comic look is very cartoon inspired, this is not the Deadpool for you. That's not the Captain America for you. That's not the Thor for you. The Iron Man's pretty good, but it is kind of wonky. But this is its own entity. If you have some cartoony figures off on another shelf somewhere, this Deadpool will go nicely with them. Because the way I look at it, I, I can't really pick one source for the costume, but it has kind of a cartoony movie look to it while also kind of bringing across the modern look in the comics. Is that vague enough for you? And I'm damn glad it comes with its own little baggie to hold all these accessories because there's a shitload of them. And I can't complain about that. I, I will never complain about too many accessories. Now somewhere in here you'll see some pictures with a Vespa. That's the new Ray Vespa. You can find it on Ami Ami or eBay. I think the red color just came out but it's also been in souvenir shops apparently in Rome for a little bit now. So yeah, I'm happy with this as just a mess around on its own type Deadpool situation thing going on. But my Legends Deadpool stays with my Legends. My 112th Collective Deadpool stays with my 112th Collective. My Rebel Tech Deadpool stays with my Rebel Tech. A Deadpool for all seasons. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. And I'll catch you on the foosh.